I just want to take this uh, short time right now to speak to you on a, a topic that, um, that I had to face with uh, in my life, going, living my life in Nigeria and coming back here and just um, as a church, as a whole, as a leadership team and as, as our pastors have been facing with this issue, I just want to be able to talk to you shortly on how to overcome your doubt. Tell your neighbor, overcome your doubt. Tell your other neighbor, overcome your doubt. So each and every single person in this place, we face doubt in our lives. It's something that each and one of us, we fight on our daily basis. It could be in your finances. It could be in your relationships. It could be in your finances. But we always come to a point where things just do not add up and we are faced with a situation that we do not know the outcome of it. As we, as many of you guys went to School of Leaders this Friday, um, our pastor shared a story of how when this church was beginning and how our pastor was faced with a situation that he had doubt. He did not know how things would turn out. He had a plan A, how, how the church would grow. It failed. He had a plan B, where it, it, that, how the church would grow. That plan failed. And he was faced with an option of C, of, of raising up new leaders. But that option was just, it was, it was so, it, it literally, it was like impossible to achieve. So our pastor, he said how, how much doubt he had. But in the midst of that doubt, he always believed that God can make a way where there is no way. And how God can, can come through. And as I had a chance to... Uh, to live in Nigeria and, and, and uh, to be able to learn, to be able to have been an intern and to learn from the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua, there's many things that I was faced with that I did not understand, where I did not believe and I was challenged. I had much doubt. For example, in the area, I, when I was growing up, I always had this um, thing that, let's say, if, if the said that God healed me, you know, and then I heard stories from before people saying, you know, God has, you know, a hand grew back. And I was like, okay, you know, so somebody doesn't have a hand and, and the prophet says, you are healed. I can see the hand grow out. So I'm like, okay, that's it. If I see somebody with the wounds, you know, like cancer or whatever, and, and they said, the prophet says, you are healed. And I'm expecting, you know, the flesh just to just grow back together. And I'm like, this guy is healed, you know. So as I was there and, um, I remember Prophet T.B. Joshua would, would come to one person and be like, you are healed. And he would stretch his hand and I would watch the hand and I will watch the guy. And I'm like, watch the hand, watch the guy. And I'm like, nothing is happening. And Prophet T.B. Joshua was like, you are healed, go home. And this guy is just, nothing's happening. So he's still limping, he's still hurt. And there's still, you know, blood coming out of his leg. You know, he had cancer. So I'm like doubting. I'm like, I don't know, this guy is not healed. And the person's like, am I healed? I'm like... I don't know. I'm new. <laughs> I'm new, okay? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a Christian. I'm new. I don't know these things, you know? So I, too, had doubt. You know, I just didn't understand it because I always heard stories of people say, God healed me, and I had cancer, and now cancer's gone. I had, you know, these, you know, lump on my, on my neck, and then God healed me and just fell off. And that's, in my mind, that's how I see healing. But when I came to the ministry of Prophet to be Joshua, I, I was just amazed and I had these doubts of when they're being proclaimed that, look, you are delivered, you are free, you are healed, and nothing would take place at that moment. I would begin to have doubts in my heart. And I begin to question, God, is this real? You know, we read in the Bible and we've seen uh, people say, uh, we see the, the people being sick in the Bible and how Jesus healed them. And we right away imagine this thing that just, bam, just quick thing just happened. And we have this idea how God would do for us. If we are sick, if we believe that the prophet or the pastor prays for us and we are healed, that's it. I must get up right now and all the pain is going to be gone. But God works in different ways. I remember many times in even this church, people would testify and they would say how, uh, the pastor would come and to pray for them that said, God has healed you. But at that moment, the pain would still be there. But the people were like, you know, I'm going to proclaim I'm healed. I'm going to proclaim I'm delivered. And as they went home, they went to sleep. The next day they woke up and they're like, the pain is gone. 
So now it's, we are faced with the situation and we are faced with the, with the circumstances where we begin to put God in the box saying, God, you should work this way. God, you should do this way. But the moment God begins to work outside of our box, we begin to doubt it and we begin to question it. And this is what I want to talk to you about this morning is that many people in the Bible and some of the greatest pillars of faith that we know in the Bible became heroes and became champions that we read about today in the greatest moment of doubt. In the greatest moment of their doubt, they became champions and the heroes of faith. That's when they were faced with the most difficult situation. We see Peter, when Jesus begins to walk on water, Peter just sees Jesus walking, thinks it's a ghost. And Jesus says, you come out and begin to walk on water. At that moment, Peter did have doubt. It's not like... Oh, let me just hop out and just run to you. You know, that's how it's going to go. He said, Jesus, if you only said your word, then I will come to you. And we know with Peter, he had doubt many times. Many times he proclaimed that Jesus is the Christ. And other times, Peter have denied Jesus. But at his weakest point, at his moment of doubt, he became the greatest apostle. But because he sought Jesus in the midst of his doubt. One thing I want to know, let you know this morning, that it is okay to have doubt. Tell your neighbor, it is okay. Tell it, say it a little bit louder. It is okay to have doubt. Now the question is, which kind of doubt are we talking about? There's one doubt, there's, there's two types of doubts. There's one doubt that leads you closer to Jesus Christ. And there's another doubt that leads you further away from Jesus Christ. And I, I just want to let you know, um, first one, first doubt, as we talked about this morning, when our pastor was starting a church and there was just nobody, there was just few families to start a church with, you know, all the other relatives left. And he had a dream, he had a vision, and he believed that God wants to use our pastor to start a revival in Tri-Cities, to use, to start a church and to bring a movement in Tri-Cities, but there was just nobody to start a church with. He had doubt. But in the midst of that doubt, he sought Jesus and said, God, give me a way. I know that you can do it. I know we want to reach out to an American-speaking people. We want to reach out to, to Hispanics. We want to reach out to black, to Chinese. We want to reach out to everybody. We don't even speak English. But God, I know you, you can do it. I know you have called me. Pastor had doubt. But in the midst of that doubt, he sought Jesus. He was crying out, God, give me a way. I know I'm facing an impossible situation, but give me a way. And as you know that today we have a church, that we, we have a hungry generation, we have Good News Church, that it's not known just in Tri-Cities, but actually it's known all over the United States. And it's became so influential that it's not just in these four, four walls of the church, but be, it goes beyond that. And this is what happens when you have doubt, but you begin to see God in the midst of that doubt. So I want to encourage you this morning that it is okay to have doubt. It is okay to face an impossible situation where you do not know an answer. You do not know what might happen. But in the midst of your doubt, begin to seek God for an answer. Begin to seek God. God, explain to me. I do not understand it, but I know you can make a way where there is no way. Amen? And the second doubt is which it leads you further away from God. And this is the doubt that eventually becomes sin. We, we've seen that God comes to Abraham. He says that I'll make you a father of many nations. I'll give you, I'll, I'll just, you're going to have so many children. But Abraham begins to doubt. Abraham begins to doubt God's word. He said, God, how can this happen? I'm, a, I'm of old age. My wife is of old age. She's barren. And I, I just don't know how it's going to happen. So Abraham begins to take matters into his own hands. And that doubt begins to lead him to sin. And we know that God had a, another plan for his life. But that doubt led him away from Jesus Christ. Begin to doubt God's word, what God said to him. And that doubt eventually becomes sin. Um. In our church, we, we, in the beginning, we were praying and we're asking God, God, we want to see miracles. We want to see healings. We want to see deliverance in our church. And we had this vision, you know, that our pastors are going to pray for people. Our pastors are going to, to do these things. But the way God began to work in our lives, in our ministry, was through the medium of the anointing water. That's how it was at first. So it was 
it was different because we imagine in a way where how God used to do before. We imagine that, you know, the pastors will pray. We're going to see healings through the stretching of hand. But the way God has planned it was much different. We see that when we came into contact with the ministry of Prophet Tibi Joshua, God started using the medium of the anointing water to be able to heal the sick, to be able to see deliverance in our churches. God had a different plan for our lives. So it was those kind of when people would see, you know, the anointing water, when they see Prophet Tibi Joshua, us looking to different ministries, they begin to doubt. They say, you know, this, this is not of God. And, and they, many of the people, they canceled their own healings. They canceled their own breakthrough, their own deliverance because they doubted in the way God moved. They doubted. And I know many people who were sick and they were just saying, you know, God cannot heal this way. God cannot just... You cannot get healed through praying with somebody through TV. You cannot do it. They just said, no, I don't believe it. I know the only way I know if somebody prays for you and that's the way it's going to be healed. I just don't believe it. And many of the people that we know of today, they cancel their breakthrough. They cancel their own healing because they chose to believe that God can only work one way. And they doubted everything else. So I want to let you know that the way and the manner God will execute his plan in our lives will differ. The way God might answer a prayer for you will differ the way God will answer a prayer for somebody else. So I remember when my mom was sick, she, she was bleeding for a constant month, just straight. She was just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And just, you know, they wanted to do surgery on her and things like that. And I remember when, when they told me the story and then um, I was just like, you know, you guys use every medium, you know, pray with Prophet Joshua, you know, pray for her at the end of the church service, you know, uh, my dad would pray for her. But she did not receive her healing until she prayed with the pastors through Emmanuel TV. So it's one thing to be able to say that, God, you did it for, for Vladimir this way, and I want you to do it this way for me too. But the way and the manner God will do it for you will differ. I remember one, one story, one testimony, one guy, uh, he said that, um, he had a testimony, he said, you know, I, I donated a car. God told me to donate a car. And uh, I donated a car to this one family until today, you know, God has brought a breakthrough in my business. God has given me so much finance. I'm just, you know, he became a millionaire just because God has, has you know, blessed him through that medium. So another guy who heard the testimony, he said, you know, Hey, that's cool. I'm going to go buy a bus. I'm just going to donate. I'm going to take a loan. I'm going to buy a bus. I'm going to donate. And God's going to bring a breakthrough for my life. He went by the bus, got a loan. And till today, he's still walking on his feet. So <laughs> the way and the manner God will work for somebody else, it differs. So you cannot say that just because pastor did it this way, it has to work for me. Or dependence and our faith lies in God. God can do miracles every different type of way. You know, if God, it takes God uh, to, to save your brother, you know, when if he begins to, to go into, let's say, sports, and God can reach him out through the area of sports. Some people, they go in the area of, of music, and God can reach out and save people through the area of music. So you can't say that because I'm, I need to bring my, my brother to church and he's going to run to the altar and he's going to save only through this way. No, God can do it differently for each one of us. Amen. So that's what we have to be dependent on God, trust in God that God can work his miracle. His ways are much higher than ours. We can't put God in the box and say, God, I want you to rescue me this way. And if you don't do it this way, everything else I will doubt. Amen. Tell your neighbor, overcome your doubts. So this is why we have school leaders on every Friday night. We have uh, where you are able to be trained. You'll be able to be equipped to know these things where maybe if you have doubt, you don't understand certain things. We encourage each one of you, go to school of leaders where you'll be equipped. You will know how God works. You'll be able to go to the scriptures and you'll be able to understand that God does not just work one way. He has many different mediums that he can express his love and his power in our lives. Amen. So I want to uh, just go to the scriptures right now. Matthew, if you have your Bible, open to Matthew 11. And we're just going to read chapters one, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. We want to take a look at a case of somebody who had doubts. And chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples, that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard 
in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered, said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. We see the life of Apostle John where he, he had doubt. He'd been preaching about the coming of Christ before. And when Jesus comes on the earth, he just begins to do things differently. And John begins to doubt. He says, I don't know. I've been preaching about the Messiah that is coming. And I don't even know if you are the one. So he takes his two disciples and says, look, I'm in prison. So you guys go and find out from Jesus. Is he the one to come? Because I don't know. I don't know. I'm doubting right now. I just don't know because Jesus is just doing things differently to the way things I believe. And they go to Jesus and Jesus begins to say, look, look at the things that are happening. John, he had doubt. But in the midst of that doubt, he began to seek an answer from Jesus Christ. He began to, to ask, God, are you, are you the one? Can you please prove yourself? I want to be able to understand. That is the doubt that led him closer to Jesus Christ. He sought God in the midst of that doubt. It is not that John had less faith. It is not that John did not have faith at all. He did have faith. He just wanted to have proof that God, I want to have my faith to be concrete. I want to know, are you the one? And that's why he sent his disciples and they found out that he is the Christ. In our lives, there's many things that, that are happening in this church that many of us, we will doubt. We don't serve a God who does things the same way as he did yesterday. He's not going to just, you know, many of us, we expect and we put God that God, you know, if I, if I will tithe, you know, God will bless me. But there will be maybe a time where God will just, was, will make you give a donation uh, to somebody's life. He will just put on your heart and say, you know, I want you to give so much, uh, this amount of money to this one person. And that's how God will be, bring a blessing into your life. Well, about for others, they will keep tithing and God will bless them through, through that. Many of us will receive healing as we will pray with ourselves. We'll just say, you know, God, I have this pain in my, in, in my body. I ask you for healing. God might heal you this way. For others, it will be when they come to church and they'll be prayed by pastor and they'll receive their healing that way. For another people, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll come to the prayer line and that's how they'll receive their healing. For others, maybe you would have to go to a different ministry outside of this church to receive their healing. I do not know. But what I want to encourage you this morning is that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he can still heal. He can still bless. But the way and the manner he will do it for you will differ from somebody else. Our, when we come in the midst of doubt, let's seek God for an answer. Let's seek God in the midst of our doubt and that doubt will strengthen our faith and we'll receive that thing that God's word has guaranteed. Amen? It was seen that um, if you can open with me to Judges. Judges 6 verses 36. It's a story of Gideon, how Gideon, God said to Gideon that he will he will win this war, that God will give him a victory. But in Judges 6, verses 36, let's read, it said, So Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, Look, I shall put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is a dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. God says to Gideon, I'll give you victory. You will save Israel. But Gideon, in that moment, he doubted. He said, I, God, I do not know. I, I just, I'm weak. I'm limited. I just have my limitations. But I want you to be able to give me a sign. I want you to prove to me, if you're going to do it for me, please do this and this and this. And God came through for him. Gideon began to see God in the midst of his doubt and that's when God has came through for him and God has brought a victory and Gideon has overcome. It is not that these people had less faith. It is that their faith was being challenged in a new way. In our, in our, walk, in our spiritual walk with, the God, with, with the Lord, we, our faith will be challenged. 
I will tell you this thing right now. There's certain things that you believe and there's certain things that you understand, but you will come to a point where your faith will be challenged in a new direction. It, ju it will just be challenged. I remember when, um, when we... We wanted, to, we wanted to be able to expand a church. We wanted to see different, you know, healings and deliverance. We wanted to see the power of God move. Our pastor continually told us, you know, look for ministries outside of, of, of our region where God is moving. Look what, what God is doing in churches there and churches there and churches there. And for some of us, we just did not understand it. We're just like, we thought God is, you know, if you pray, you know, 24-7, God's going to move. And this is the way we thought it was going to happen. But things are just not working out. Our faith begins to be challenged. We begin to look for ministries and for mentors outside of a church where God is moving. We came to a point where we had doubt. God, is it really that you called us to do this? We don't know. We wanted to close down the church. Years were going by. Nothing was just happening. We just came to a point where we had doubt. But our pastor in the midst of that doubt began to say, God, God will come through for us. There will be a revival in Tri-Cities. God will begin to heal through your hands. God will begin to save through your hands. You will see this place back. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Our faith was being challenged in a new way. We did not know. We thought the first year we're going to open the church, bam, revival is going to happen. American people are going to come. Mexican people will come. The Russians, everything's going to flood. It wasn't happening that way. You know, it was, just, it was just completely the opposite. You know, the people that we started with would just begin to leave. Our faith was being challenged. And I want to let you know that when, whatever you're expecting from God, have an open mind. God might bring you an answer that you may not understand. But do never be too fast to open your mouth and say, I do not believe it. Always have an open mind. Say, God, I do not understand it, but I trust you that you will come through for me. I just trust you and believe you that you will come through for me. I mean, I remember with our church, when, when we first started off with praying with the anointed water. It was just, it was unrealistic. It was just unheard of. Nobody ever prays with water for people. It's oil. It's oil. Get oil, you know. Get oil. Get more oil and just pray. It's just, we didn't understand that. We didn't understand it. But I love the heart of our pastor where you say, you know, we're going to see God in the midst of our doubt. We do not understand it, but we're not going to say that this is not from God. We know that God can use any medium to express his power or might. And we thank God uh, for, for the life of our pastor. Come on, put your hands together for the life of our pastor. <laughs> and I remember in, uh, when I was in Nigeria and there was um, certain things I did not understand. I remember Prophet Josh always at the end of the day saying, examine all things in the light of God's word. Whatever I'm telling to you today, don't just be too fast to believe it. Don't be run off. Oh, pastor said it. This is it. Go into the Bible and find out the truth for yourself. Don't be too easily to persuade into one thing or another. Grab the word of God and to begin to examine. God, did you do it like that? You know, people are, you know, we've seen testimonies that are, that are happening, you know, through praying, through the TV, through the medium of the anointing water, sometimes through just fasting. Go into the Bible to begin to see. Did God do it like that there? Did God use different mediums? You know, we read in the Bible that God uses spit, you know, to heal people. So it's like, it's weird. It's different, you know. But God did it. God healed them. You know, sometimes we hear that he used uh, the staff to be able to, to split the sea, to, to do this and that. You know, it's different. I don't understand it. But that's how God expressed his power or might. Whatever situation that you're facing today, in your family, is it in your marriage, is it in your finances? You may be praying that God come through for me. God, bring me an answer. And many times God will bring that answer to you right in front of you. But because of our doubt and say, no, God needs to do this way, we could cancel that answer. So I want you to be able to, when you don't understand certain things, don't be too quick to say this is not from God. In the midst of your doubt, see God and God will come through for you. Amen? Whatever you criticize, you will never have. Whatever you criticize, you will never have. So it is so important that when you see God is doing something for other people, and don't be too fast to say, oh, this is not from God. Whatever you criticize, you'll never have. I'm, uh, I'm, 
we're honored today to be able to look up to so many ministries where God is doing mighty things, where, where people, where churches are growing, where churches are expanding, where we see God doing mighty things, and we're looking up to them. We, we're not too fast to say, well, this is not from God because they clap. Well, this is not from God because they dance for six hours straight and they have worship for six hours straight. This is not from God. No, we just know that God can execute his plan differently in every single person's life. Amen? Um, what happened was we wanted to, you know, when our pastor was starting the church, we wanted to see revival in this church happening through mighty leaders. We wanted to see people who can speak English eloquently. We wanted to see mighty, you know, mighty miracles like, God, you're going to come through and bring this person who can speak. And then God chose to raise up, you know, young people like us. We were 14 years old and God chose to bring revival through young people. When pastor was start, first starting this church, we literally had people who did not speak English. We had people who did not understand anything, who, who stole at the point of our ministry. <laughs> you know, who were doing bad things, you know, when we were, we were in church. We didn't understand, but God chose to use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Other people would be able to probably, you know, say, God, I want to bring revival in, in, in Tri-Cities. And, you know, so the pastor would go look for somebody out of college to be able to graduate with bachelor's degree in speaking and to have a degree in, in, uh, in pastorship, <laughs> if there's a thing like that. You know, to be able to lead this revival. But God chose to use 14-year-olds at the time when we were beginning the church. Just a bunch of kids to be able to bring his move. And today many families are restored because of those 14-year-olds. Today many people received their, their marriages became to be whole because of those 14-year-olds that were beginning. Today many people are healed in their bodies because of those 14-year-olds that were beginning the ministry. We might have a view of saying, God, I want it to be done this way. But when God does completely the opposite, don't begin to doubt. See God in the midst of your doubt. Amen. Remember the story of Naaman in the Bible. You know, he wanted to be healed by, by prophet Elijah. And when he came to him, Elijah said, go and dip yourself in this dirty river seven times. He expected the prophet to be able to come out, stretch his hand, and the sickness to go away. But God had a different plan for him. God said, go and dip yourself seven times in, in a, this Jordan River, this dirty river. Imagine that. Imagine you put yourself in a position, you're asking God for an answer, and God says, go do something completely opposite. But he obeyed. In the midst of that doubt, he even, you know, we read the Bible, he was just mad. He's like, I don't know what this, you know, this is crazy. But in the midst of that doubt, he sought God for an answer, and we see how he was healed. So whatever that we are facing today, whatever doubt that we have in our lives, whatever that we're looking, we, maybe there's a career that we do not know where we're going to go. Maybe it's a marriage that is falling apart. Maybe it's finances that you're lacking. Your business is just not taking off. In the midst of that doubt, begin to seek God for an answer. And God will come through for you. Amen? Tell your neighbor, overcome your doubts. Tell your other neighbor, overcome your doubts. One thing that we have to know is that Satan always and always makes us to doubt what God's word said. Satan wants to slip us into unhealthy doubt where we begin to focus on ourselves instead of God's promises. Satan wants us to be able to question everything that God has said and to begin to point our faith into our own selfishness. To be able to see that, look, you're weak. You cannot do it. Look, you're, you're not holy enough. Look, you're not righteous enough. Look, Nobody in your family has made it. Look where you're coming from. You, you are, you're not able to do it. That's what Satan's aim is to be able to doubt God's ability and God's desire to be able to use us. I mean, we see in, in, uh, in the Bible so many people who were just disqualified by outward appearance. Disqualified by the things that they've done. But God used them to bring a breakthrough in their lives. The case of Moses, he was a murderer. I mean, imagine somebody getting up to speak today. I mean, today would be weird. I know back in the day it was much easier. But who was a murderer? And God used a murderer to bring a mighty nation of Israel out of captivity. We see Peter who denied Jesus. You know, it's like you you're, you're have this, your clique, your best friend, you're somebody that you roll with for 33 years. And he denies you, just says, you know, I don't know this, this Jesus. And God uses Peter to be able to bring mighty revival. And this is why we have this, this community. Today, that's why we have church. Because Peter has overcome his doubt. 
Don't begin to limit yourself by what you can do, what you can say, where you can be. Begin to focus on what God has said in his word for you. That with him, all things are possible. That I am an overcomer. That I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen? When we begin to worry, when we begin to doubt, we cripple the ability for us to think, to act, and to exercise faith in the present. When we begin to doubt God's word, when we begin to th look upon our own selves, we cripple the ability to think, to act, and to exercise our faith in the present tense. Every time you begin to doubt, you cannot have faith that God will come through for you. You cannot have faith enough to, have, to know that God can work a miracle in your life. When you begin to trust God, say, God, I don't understand it. But I believe that you said in your word that those who believe will make it happen. You begin to stand upon God's word and God will make it come through. But when you begin to doubt God's word, God's ability and desire to make it come to pass in your life, you will not be able to exercise the faith to make that thing come to pass. The best, the best weapon against doubt is testimony and God's track record, what God has done in your life. It is so important for you to begin to surround yourself with testimony of what God is doing around the world. I remember where our pastor is just, just always saying that begin to surround yourself with what God is doing. There's, there's people that are being healed uh, at that church. There's people being saved by hundreds, by thousands at that church. Begin to look there. Begin to surround yourself by testimonies knowing that God can use you and God will be able to do the same thing in your own church. Begin to surround yourself by the testimonies and by the evidence that God is doing something today because God will do it in your church. We, I mean, we, we've seen, uh, those people that have been here long enough, they've seen the, the changes in our church. When we begin to surround ourselves with churches where God is doing something, it was just a matter of months where we see the same thing happening in this place. Just a matter of months. If you're sick in your body, begin to surround yourself with testimonies, those people who are healed. If you need a breakthrough in your life where you know that your business is just stagnant, begin to look for testimonies. God, where, who did you bless? I want to be able to know where is this something that, that somebody did something and, and their business begin to flourish. Where God is just, power is moving. When you surround yourself with testimonies and evidence, you will have faith enough that God can do it for you too. We see when David faces a Goliath. You see, it was just, everybody was just scared. And it's not that David was just, had more boldness or anything. David surrounded himself with testimony. saying, God, you helped me to overcome with the lion. You helped me to overcome with the bear. This is just going to be another one that I can overcome. David begins to surround himself with testimony. He begins to surround himself with evidence. And we see how God begins to step on his side. And David has conquered and he's defeated the Goliath. Many Goliaths in your life will be conquered the day you begin to surround yourself with cloud of witnesses. The cloud of what God is doing around this world. Where you see the power of God. When somebody says, you know, many people died of cancer. But say, well, you know what? Yesterday I just saw somebody being healed from cancer. So I, today I can be healed. Somebody says, you know, 50% of people get divorced. So, well, you know what? Just yesterday, I saw a testimony of marriage being restored. You know, it was just an impossible situation. And marriage just got put together by God's grace. And today, they're happily, they're just like, it's like a brand new marriage. When you begin to surround yourself with testimonies, that doubt will begin to diminish. And you will have faith enough to know God can come through, can come through for you. God can do it for you. He is the same. He can do what God says he can do. And I will have what God's word has guaranteed for my life. Amen. Unhealthy doubt only comes when we fail to observe all evidence that God has given us. Unhealthy doubt comes when we do not take the time to observe what God is doing in our lives. I mean, if you, if you, if you, you know, begin to say, this guy just got set free from drugs. And we say, you know, no, it, it, you know, it doesn't happen. It was just one in a million, da, 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 da. That's when unhealthy doubt comes and that's when it leads you to sin. When we fail to observe all evidence in our lives. You know, many times we, we complain that God hasn't given us this. We complain that God has not brought a breakthrough in my business. But you forgot how God has kept you healthy all the way of your life. You forgot how God has, has given you, you know, a, a, good, a good family. 
You forgot that God has always provided, that you always had food on your table. You forgot that God has given you this. So now you're focusing on what you don't have and you begin to slip into unhealthy doubt. You begin to doubt God's goodness and God's ability to make it come to your life. And that's when unhealthy doubt comes and that it is when it becomes sin. So when we look at what God has done on our lives, when we begin to review God's track record in our lives, God will come through for our lives. Amen? And uh, I remember when, when, we, when there was a point in our church in our lives where we had nothing going on in, in this church. There was just nothing happening. No people being saved. Nobody was getting healed. I mean, nobody was just coming to our church. Just, just nothing was happening here. And I remember our pastor was just saying, okay, you guys are going to need to travel uh, to every conference. You guys need to travel to this church. You guys are going to go to Ukraine. You guys are going to go to Nigeria. You guys are going to go to Florida. You need to visit this revival, this revival. You need to surround yourself with everything that you can so your faith will grow that God can do it in your lives. Whatever the situation that you're facing tonight, it may be impossible. Every odd may be stacked up against you. But when you begin to observe all evidence... All the testimony of what God is doing, God will be able to come through for your life. Amen. Amen. 